Specifications! Hi, my name is Marian Villanueva, and I will be covering the specifications for our low pass filter and the prototype design. Our team decided to fabricate the step low pass filter as it yielded the best result out of our three designs. In our microstrip simulations, compensated results were close to the ideal results. These results will be explained further later on in the presentation. Our goal was to design a step low pass filter with a 0.5 dB ripple in the pass band. The filter has a cutoff frequency of 4 GHz with an out of band attenuation of negative 25 dB at 6 GHz. Prototype design! We went with a 5 section design in order to have the lowest attenuation possible without having to include too many elements. The element values from table 8.4 and POSAR were used to design the prototype filter. Shown here is the schematic of the prototype design and the simulation results for the insertion loss and return loss. The insertion loss is represented by the blue curve while the return loss is represented by the pink curve. The graph has the same attenuation frequency relation observed in figure 8.27 in POSAR. We note that the cutoff frequency was at about 4.2 GHz instead of at the expected 4 GHz. This is because lumped elements do not perform as well at microwave frequencies. The curve shows an attenuation of negative 26.59 dB at 6 GHz with a near 0.5 dB ripple in the passband. Matthew Sahara will now explain the process of implementing transmission lines into our filter design. Ideal transmission line! What's up jammers? Because we are using the stepped configuration, we will implement transmission lines with either a high impedance ZH or a low impedance ZL. ZH and ZL should be the highest and lowest of possible impedances respectively. For our transmission line implementation, we designed it with three major constraints. The ratio of ZH over ZL must be much greater than 1. The electrical length of all transmission lines should be under 45 degrees. Using microwave office, it is required that the width ratio be less than 20. Subsequently, it is recommended that the ratio be less than 10. The stepped impedance filter behaves very similarly to the lumped element prototype. Looking at POSAR's sample graph, we see that the stepped impedance filter will cut off slightly faster and attenuate slightly slower than its lumped element counterpart. In our simulations, the cutoff frequency is at 4.089 GHz. We have a negative 24.6 dB attenuation at 6 GHz. These results are very close to our initial filter specifications. Ideal microstrips! We now convert our ideal transmission line filter into an ideal microstrip filter. We use TX line for transmission line to microstrip conversion. We also include the qualities of the substrate we use in M sub. Compared to the ideal transmission line, our cutoff frequency is at a much more desired frequency at 4.02 GHz. We suffer some loss of attenuation, however with negative 22.95 dB at 6 GHz compared to our goal of negative 25 dB. Understood with discontinuities! We now take into account the step in with discontinuities of the microstrip lines by adding M step into our schematic. Adding the discontinuities changed the cutoff frequency to 3.684 GHz. Our attenuation at 6 GHz, however, is surprisingly quite ideal. Now back over to Marion for microstrip compensated. Microstrip compensated! Because the discontinuities make the transmission lines seem longer than they are, we shorten the transmission lines by using the tuner on MWO to make the insertion loss closer to our ideal values. To preserve the symmetry, we evenly decrease the microstrip lines to preserve the symmetry of the filter. We were able to retain our cutoff frequency of 4 GHz and, a, and get an attenuation of negative 23.34 dB at 6 GHz which was very close to the design goal of negative 25 dB. Overlaying the discontinuity and compensated insertion loss, we can see that compensating brought our insertion loss back closer to the ideal microstrip line. Filter fabrication! 
Export filter design as a DXF file and import to Silhouette software. You may need to resize the general dimensions. Cut substrate to the proper dimensions of the filter to be fabricated. Put packing tape on copper tape. Place the copper tape on the cutting mat with the taped copper side facing down and secure with more tape. Choose the correct blade and cut tape with silhouette cutter. Make sure it cuts through the tape but does not damage the mat. Remove copper from the packing tape, making sure that the copper for your filter stays on the tape. The picture shown is what is left after removing the filter. Put the copper cutout onto the insulating side of the substrate and roll out any imperfections. Solder on SMA connectors using solder sparingly. Calibrate the network analyzer and use it to measure the fabricated filter's insertion loss and return loss. Measure analysis. Shown here is our measured insertion loss and return loss of our fabricated filter. Our fabricated filter meets our chosen design specification of negative 25 dB at 6 GHz, but the cutoff frequency is pushed back to 3.8 GHz. This can be better seen by a close-up view. Comparing it to our compensated microstrip line, the new cutoff frequency is even more apparent. Overall though, the compensated and measured insertion and return loss is similar. Looking at the insertion and return loss graphs, the compensated and measured values are overall very similar in shape and generally similar in value. Reasons for the discrepancies can be attributed to a poor soldering job. Our SMA connector fell off and we had to resolder it on. We had a lack of experience, but we sure had a great time. And it was a good learning experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.